Jesus said, if I fear, I should run to him. No one else can be my shield. I should run to him. For the Lord is good and faithful. He will keep us day and night. We can always run to Jesus. Jesus strong and kind. Jesus said, if I am lost, he will come to me. And he showed that on the cross, he will come to me. For the Lord is good and faithful. He will keep us day. Jesus strong and kind, we can always run to Jesus, Jesus strong and kind. Thank you. Trudy, that was beautiful, beautiful message. I'd like for you to open your Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1. And we will look at verses 3 and 4. told someone last week when the lightning took our air conditioning out that uh, we have such cool and beautiful weather here we don't even need air conditioning. I might have been exaggerating a little. But I see your fanning. Remember the old fans that they give us with the stick and the nice Wow. Well, let's, uh, let's look at our passage for today. I, well, we read it for the uh, opening uh, verses. Do we have the, is this sermon going to be, the PowerPoint going to be on the screen? That's not very bright, is it? It'll brighten up. Okay. First uh, Peter chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. This is Peter talking uh, and writing in a letter and sending it out to the churches, and it got circulated and down through the years until we're reading it right here. We are reading it right here today. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise Him. And then it says, In His great mercy He has given us new birth. Well, let's talk about that a little bit, but let me go ahead and finish the text into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. And where is this inheritance kept? Kept for you in heaven. Now who has an inheritance? Right here it says you. Well, us saints in the church. An inheritance in heaven. How many people does the Lord want to give the inheritance to? Everyone. Everyone. The saints and even those who haven't claimed the inheritance yet. The title of the sermon is Claim Your Inheritance. And I want to talk about this heavenly inheritance. I want to talk about uh, earthly inheritance. And I want to talk about Satanic inheritance. Is there such a thing? Well, you can decide. Uh, Heavenly inheritance, earthly inheritance, satanic inheritance. What order should I go in? Should I go in the order that's up there? Or would someone like me to jump ahead? 
I kind of like the earthly inheritance. Let's, let's go in the order that it's up there. Heavenly, heavenly inheritance. What did the verses say? A new birth. What is new birth? God wants to give us a new birth, new desires, new motives, uh, leading to a new life. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering. Jesus died on the cross for us, and a passage says, Peter says, and was resurrected. And that resurrection is the hope that this inheritance is really true. Oh, there's no doubt in, in my mind. It's very true. And I really appreciate uh, that he has given me those fruits of the Spirit. Isn't that the new birth that Peter is talking about here? A new love. What is love? Gen becoming genuinely interested in other people in the same way that you're interested in your own self. It's not selfishness. You can love yourself without being selfish. You can love others, uh, and that, that's not selfishness. A real interest in others. Joy. Isn't that what God wants us to be? Full of joy. Hope. It never perishes. And it's an inheritance that will never perish. When do I receive the new birth experience? And I have new desires and motives and purposes written on my heart. It's, it's being offered all the time. Was it offered to the Old Testament uh, followers of God? Yes, of course. And was it offered to us? Yes, of course. And... Uh, we accept these, joy, uh, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice, uh, full of joy, full of peace. Do, is there anybody here that needs, you know, some peace once in a while? Or is there anybody here that is the opposite, worry, worry, worry? You don't have to hold your hands up. Uh, I can do that worry thing. I think we're all born to be able to do the worry thing. Worry, 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 instead of have the peace that passes understanding. We can have, we don't have to have the worry because Jesus said, look at the, uh, look at the birds out there. Even the squirrels in our yard don't have to worry because Cheryl feeds them along with the birds. Every once in a while I hear in the back door slam and she's out there trying to chase the squirrels away, but she's not very good at it. The last thing her father, when he turned 97 last year, told her on the phone was she's just going to have to get a, a uh, pellet gun and deal with those, those squirrels, and she hasn't shot one yet. I, I have them all named. Something's wrong. Uh, we need to, do, do the squirrels want it? One of our squirrels is so fat that he can't jump up there and get that bird feeder food uh, anymore. But uh, God has planted in our hearts love and joy and peace and long-suffering, all of the fruits of the Spirit in Galatians chapter 5, all of those fruits of the Spirit, and they're just a free gift to us, aren't they? Can, can I... <laughs> Let me tell you about Mr. Schneider. I hope he's not going to be listening on, online. I'm going to tell a couple stories about people that I didn't ask their permission, but there are none of you in here, I except Cheryl's cousins here, and I, should I tell a story about you? No. Uh, last week we had 10 visitors from Cheryl's family, or 10 of us, and this week we have... Is there, is there 10 of us? Yeah, isn't there? Uh, here. And so all of you that are listening on the Internet, it's, it's not feeling as warm as you thought. Next week, you, we might have air conditioning going in here. And so you need to come and see uh, what the air conditioning is, is like. 
this, this um, man, Mr. Snyder, he was a farmer. And at the first district that Cheryl and I went to uh, as a pastor when we were really, really young, really, really young, I don't think, we knew we were young, but I don't think we realized and enjoyed it as much <laughs> as we should have. Well, I went out to visit uh, Mr. Schneider, and he was a pleasant, nice man. He had joined the church during an evangelistic series that they held in Bedford, Iowa. But I went in-gathering. Does anyone remember going in-gathering to businesses in that little town? And uh, everybody was telling me about Mr. Schneider. Mr. Schneider, there was only one stoplight in the town. That was the size town it was. And so on rainy days, guess where all the farmers would go? They would go to uh, town. And they would be on the one street of stores in the town, but the phones would start ringing when Mr. Snyder came to town because he had a terrible temper. German background, he was short, about five foot two, stocky build, strong man. One time a, a, a salesman came to his uh, farm and uh, was trying to sell him some fertilizer and seed and stuff, and he picked that man up that was much taller than him and carried him out to the road, farm road, and threw him down and said, don't come back. This was the kind of person he was. And when he would come to town, they didn't want him coming into their stores to buy things. But that wasn't the big exciting part of the story. The story is that after he gave his heart to Jesus at the evangelistic meetings, he became a different person. Amen. He was born again. Amen. Love and joy and peace and long-suffering. And uh, I heard this story over and over. They were giving nice donations and stuff. And they said... Uh, Surely the Spirit of the Lord is with you folks in that church because this was a miracle to see this big change. Do we have to give Bible studies and be able to look up and have memorized 500 different Bible texts in order to be a witness about what Jesus can do and transform and change us? We don't have to. Do you know that... In the, when Jesus comes back, do you know how many saints are going to be there uh, with love and joy and peace and long-suffering? Do you remember the number? It's in the Bible in Revelation chapter 7, verse 9. A multitude that no man could number. A multi God is powerful. He can change us. And it's a free gift of salvation to us. Well, when he changes us, we're going to be doing all kinds of good things and all kinds of good behaviors and all kinds of good reputation. And if you had an old bad reputation, it's going to become a really good reputation. And your neighbors are going to know something's different about those people. And it's because they're allowing the Holy Spirit to come in and transform them. Now... How do I get this inheritance from heaven? What do I have to do? How much do I have to pay for it? Pay my tithe, and then I get the inheritance. No? Uh, never do one, break one commandment, then I'll get the inheritance. I couldn't get the, I can't do it. I can't not break the commandments. I can't perfectly give offerings and tithes. I can't perfectly love without what? A new birth experience. And then I can't help but pay my tithes and can't help but be loyal. Uh, be loyal to God. Loyalty to God. Loyalty to God. I'm not a legalist. I'm a loyalist. I love him so much. He, he planted love in me. I have to love him. 
He planted joy in me. He planted all of these things in me. And so this inheritance is waiting for me in heaven. All I have to do is claim it. And in fact, part of it I've got already. And what about the eternal life part? Have I already begun my life? And if I live forever, even if I sleep for a while, you know, I'm going to be 70 years old in two months. How in the world did that happen? You young people. I was about your age at my last birthday. Uh, But that inheritance is already up there. And he's got an inheritance. He can give it to everybody. Well, let's look at the second inheritance. And I I wouldn't mind having this one, but earthly inheritance. Anybody of you ever inherit anything? That was kind of nice, wasn't it? You didn't really deserve it, but you inherited it. Uh, And uh, I, I, you know what we did? This week, Cheryl came to me with this plastic contraption, and, and she's an RN, and she told me to spit in it. And she says, you've got to spit until the spit gets this deep in there. And I spit, and I spit, and I spit. And w- what was I spitting into? A test tube that was going to be sent off to 23 Me. 23 and me. Anybody do 23 and me or some other kind of genetic testing? Uh, so we're going to get this back. And then when I was laying asleep and tossing and turning and uh, couldn't sleep uh, one night this week after I did all the spitting, I started thinking, oh, you know, I've heard some stories about when people find out about their genetic background that they're not exactly thrilled what they hear or, uh, so, or that they're related to somebody they didn't know. And I started thinking, oh, I don't know that I have any rich relatives. My parents didn't have, they, they were, dad was a pastor. They didn't accumulate a big fortune to, for me to inherit. So... I don't know that I'm going to inherit anything, but maybe with the information from 23andMe, I'll find out that I'm related to somebody that has no heirs and there's this big fortune that's going to be coming my way. Would that be exciting? It would be. I'll have to admit it. It would be. Let me tell you about a lady that was... um, Again, I, didn't, I won't t- tell her name. I'll try to sh- shorten the story so you can't ever figure out who it is. Really nice lady. She went to work for a man that was starting a company. She was his personal secretary assistant, and he was starting this company up, and, it, and the company took off. And she helped him, and the company grew, and she helped him, and the company grew, and... Uh, and the boss and his wife were just living this wonderful life of luxury, $70 million. The company was uh, um, worth. And uh, the secretary, how much do you think a secretary at, the, uh, you know, this would be, I guess, a small company, but still $70 million. How much do you think they pay a secretary there? Secretary wages. And as she, she worked for decades and decades and decades, and she was uh, 50, 60 years old, and uh, the wife died. The boss's wife died. And after about five years, guess what happened? They got married. The secretary and the boss that had a company worth $70 million. And they had, he had no children, no heirs. And he was a little bit older than her, and he passed away, and guess what she had? She had a company of $70 million. Also, she'd been right there when they built it up and knew everything about it to keep it running. And what an interesting, kind of wonderful thing. And she was an Adventist member, and she was started using that money 
to help with ministries that she thought would grow and uh, produce and reproduce. Is that, that would be exciting, wouldn't it? I've got another number, you can't quite see it at the bottom, 1.2 billion. Does that ring a bell with anyone? The last, uh, what was that big, what's that big multi-state lottery they have? I forgot the name of it. I've, I've never bought a lottery ticket. I, I think it's gambling. <laughs> but if someone gave me a ticket, I'd probably get it out of the drawer and look at it to see uh, what would happen. Well, 1.2 billion is what one person won. Do you know how much a billion dollars is? If you wanted to take your billion dollars that you just won from the lottery, I don't know if they gave it to him all at once or how that goes, but if you wanted to put one million of your billion in separate banks, do you know how many banks you'd have to go around and start a, an account for one million in? 1,000 banks. Put a million dollars in 1,000 banks. And that's what he won. Uh, that's pretty exciting. What's the danger of inheritance on earth? And probably the reason I'm never going to have any, any big one. Because the Holy Spirit not only knows that he strengthened me with all these fruits of the Spirit, he knows my weaknesses. Might just, I might just go crazy. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, and Or it might be like the story I heard. Uh, they won the lottery, this husband and wife, and the wife said, called up her husband and said, we, we won the lottery, or I won the lottery, she said. And uh, come, come home fast, or we need to pack, pack bags. And he came home, and his bags were already packed. And she said, he said, where are we going? And she said, I don't know. You're just leaving. Get out of here. <laughs> Money and inheritance could change things, couldn't it? Could be for, do you know that when this one lady got her 70 million that I knew, you know her life got complicated? Do you know people were calling, banging, door emails with all kinds of worthy, worthy projects that she could help with? Uh, to do, and she, uh, is that what she would like? To, if you had one billion dollars, how in the world would you take good care of that one billion dollars? Wouldn't that just, wouldn't, I would worry all night long, all day long. I'd be spending it on some good things, but also wondering if somebody was stealing it all behind my back and, and all of that. Is that? A lifestyle that's re really worth living? Which would you rather have? Would you rather have this earthly, earthly inheritance or that heavenly inheritance? Well, you already have the heavenly in inheritance. So why should we be worrying about anything else? I mean, even if the bottom drops out of the economy and we're living in the last days and the worst possible things are happening and, uh, and you're ending up, we're all ending up living under a bridge somewhere, uh, wondering if we can scrape together enough. But insects are clean to eat, right? Clean meat. And if it really gets that bad, guess what? I still have an inheritance coming right? What if I knew that my earthly father had billions of dollars, but he wasn't going to give anything to me until after he passed away? Would that make a difference in my whole life? He passed away, I'd have the billions now. That would, I mean, that would make a difference, looking forward to that, well, one day I will have a whole lot of money. One day I won't be mowing my own lawn, I'll be hiring people to do it uh, one day. Well, one day I'm going to be walking on streets of gold. And it's real, and I already have that inheritance, and it's saved up for me, and it won't, it's not going anywhere in heaven. That's what Peter says right here. 
So, let's look at the last one. Oh, oh this one was loyalty, loyalty to me and my stuff. Loyalty. I don't, it's selfishness. You know, it can be that. I think, you know, who knows? I don't think it would work. I really don't for me because God <laughs> hasn't given me millions to, to handle for him. But just think, I wouldn't have to be selfish. You could have earthly uh, inheritance, earthly money, earthly luxuries, uh, a beautiful church without air conditioning. We, uh, we could ha have all of that, but look at the, at the last one, which I don't want to have, a satanic inheritance. I've got a picture of the devil up there. I don't know. I think that's some actor. I hope, I hope he's not going to see this. Uh, but I thought he looks pretty sinister person. Whatever part he was playing looks pretty devilish. Does the devil run around with horns coming out of his head and a long tail? And do we know exactly? No. Let me read to you about what the devil's inheritance and what his evilness is about. <laughs> I'm new to glasses. Some of you probably had them tangled in your hair before. Let me read to you Galatians. Let's look at Galatians chapter 5. And we just did, we've just been looking at the verses of uh, that have to do with, with all of the fruits of the Spirit. But let's look at the, the stuff that the devil has to offer for us here. Galatians 5, starting with, um, with um, verse 19. Oh, I know what's wrong. Is I'm looking at Philippians. Galatians chapter 5. I wanted to read it because sometimes we think, you know, that we are got to earn our salvation. Well, we can't earn it because I can't put love in my heart if I don't have genuine interest in all of you and in everybody. And I can't put real joy, heavenly joy in my heart, and peace, and long-suffering, patience with other people. I can't do that. And I can't get these things out of my heart either that I was born with, Galatians chapter 5. Now, verse 19, now the works of the flesh are manifest. Where did the works of the flesh come from? They came from our relationship, our broken relationship with God and where Satan has stepped in. Be sober, be vigilant, Peter said, because the devil is out. He's out to get us. He's going to devour us. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murderers, drunkenness, revelings, the, and such like of which I tell you be, before, as I have told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But I was born with an inclination for all of those things. In fact, all of us kind of, we're not saying, whoa, I mean, there's some old English words there, but we know what this is talking about because we can look at our hearts and at our own natures and know we inherited these things. And how easy is it to slip back away from the new birth, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness? How easy is it to slip away from that and back into this Satan's evil uh, inheritance. Now, some people have apparently a lot of fun 
with Satan's evil inheritance, all of those things. How, what percentage or how many, do you know a Bible text that tell us how many are in Satan's camp on this inheritance thing? How many are? Our pastor has been giving us some really good sermons the last few weeks on judgment. And he's been pointing out some texts, and one of the texts he read to us was Revelation chapter 20, verse 9, which says that those that are trying in the very last to take the holy city, those evil ones with Satan, uh, are like the sands of the sea. Sands of the sea. That means there's quite a few that are get, becoming loyal to Satan instead of loyal to Jesus. And, uh, and, uh, but the good news is, the good news is, I don't do anything about it. He does it in me. Plants those desires and motives. Of course, I have to act on them. It's not just passive. We don't turn into robots. We just turn into people with a lot better aspirations a lot better desires and motives and purposes in life because God plants them there for us. So uh, what should be the conclusion of these three uh, inheritances? I am going to stop. Well, I don't know. I guess I'm going to wait until I see the 23andMe report. <laughs> And uh, I wonder if anyone has found out through 23 and me that they had a big inheritance. I have a brother-in-law that just received a letter from New Jersey saying that his father had left some money in accounts in New Jersey and that he should investigate it. You think that's just some kind of hoax or do you think that maybe there's some money for him? Better than that, my brother-in-law already, if he will uh, claim it, has an inheritance in heaven. And I have an inheritance in heaven. So I'm, I'm so thankful for the sermons that we've been hearing from our, our pastor on judgment. And he brought out a point several times. I don't know if you got it. But I just want to end my, my sermon with the point, one of the points he was making the last few weeks. And that is, who is really judging you? Who decides that you're going to get the inheritance? Who decides that you're going to be judged to be able to get the inheritance? Who makes the decision? Is it God? He's already made the decision. What does he want? He wants you to claim the promises. He wants you to claim the inheritance. Uh, he wants to make you into a new person. He wants to do all of that, and you just have to choose to let him do it. And so when you get in the judgment, you know, the investigative judgment uh, and the other judgments that the pastor went over, if you've decided that you're accepting all this free gifts from God and the transformation and change, then you don't need to be fighting on the little nitty-gritties with the devil on his evil ideas. I think this week I'm going to try to overcome, let's see, which one of those big lists? Envy. Uh, that's not how it works. God plants and pushes all that stuff out of your heart and puts all of the good stuff in. And then you're going to be doing the good stuff because he's written it on your heart. Let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, I want you to continue writing on my heart to do good. And uh, I, I really want this inheritance. I know you already have it there for me. I don't want anything to happen to take me away from that uh, new birth written on my heart experience of your love and law and that I just want to be exactly like you and loyal to you, uh, not to try to be a legalist earning my salvation, but just because that's so exciting. What an adventurous life to be uh, part of, of what you're doing 
in your universe. It's this great controversy. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Our hymn of dedication is hymn 594, Heir of the Kingdom. Let's stand as we sing hymn 594. slumber why art thou sleeping so near thy blessed home wake then arouse thee and gird on thine armor speed for the moments are hurrying on heir of the kingdom say why dost thou linger how canst thou tarry inside of the prize? Up and adorn thee, the Savior is coming. Haste to receive him, descending the skies. Earth's mighty nations in strife and commotion tremble with terror and sink in dismay. Listen, tis not but the chariot's loud rumbling, heir of the kingdom, no longer delay. Stay not, oh stay not, for earth's vain allurements. See how its glory is passing away. Break the strong fetters the foe hath bound o'er thee. Heir of the kingdom, turn, turn thee away. Keep thee, I single, the head upward lifted. Watch for the glory of earth's coming king. Lo, o'er the mountaintops light is now breaking. Heirs of the kingdom, rejoice ye and sing. Uh, Father in heaven, we know you'll be going with us during this uh, coming week. Uh, help us to stay focused on heaven and not on all the, the little stuff that happens uh, that upsets us. We're so excited to know, and we have a message, a good message to give to other people. Uh, especially there's people now that are listening, wondering what's happening in this old world with all of these things going on in the current events. We pray that you would go with us in Jesus' name, amen.